Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Booking Around Town. I am your host, Jacques, and a happy Sunday to you all. Today, I am excited to have an opportunity to speak to today's guest. I had a chance to meet her last year at PandaCon. It was my first time attending that event and actually my first time meeting her as well. Um, I was immediately drawn to her book covers because, as you all know, I am a book cover snob, and I also like new adult and paranormal and fantasy. So this week's guest, we have Christy Cook, who is an award-winning writer in various genres, but particularly she writes new adult paranormal romance. Her um, best-selling series was the Soul Saver series, which includes seven books as well as a few novellas, which allowed her to hit Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Apple's top 100 paid list. So, everyone, please welcome this week's guest on Booking Around Town, Christy Cook. Hi, Christy. Hi, Jock. Hey, Christy. How's it going? It's going well. Busy, crazy, insane, but everything's going well. Is that the How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. The same, the the life as a a blogger, reviewer, and a podcast host, I guess, is almost as similar to an author, but maybe not uh, on deadline. So, yeah, I don't want to be you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't mind it. Well, good, good. So I am excited to have you on the show. Um, We did have a chance to meet face-to-face last year at PanCon, which was great. And ever since then, uh, I have been totally stalking you um, professionally, not in a crazy way where I'm creeping through (laughs) your, looking through your window or anything like that. So I am um, a professional stalker. That's what we like to call it. And okay, well, it goes both ways. <laughs> oh, really? You've been peeking through my window, too? <laughs> I have. <laughs> you and Dallas. <laughs> well, yes, me and Dallas. Oh, that's so sweet. I'm hoping that he doesn't bark, but if he does, that means he's given his seal of approval for this particular chat. So um, it can go either way uh, right now. So. <laughs> Um, so, um, tell us a little bit about what's been going on with you. I know you have a ton of uh, projects that you've been working on, and I'm really excited to hear about what's going on with Havenwood Falls, because for those of you guys who don't know, Christy has, um, embarked on this wonderful journey of creating this new world with these wonderful characters and different authors. And I'm sure everyone would love to hear about that. So how about let's jump in right into that and see what's going on with with that particular project. Okay, that is my big, big, big baby right now. Authors always say writing a book and putting it out there to the world is like giving birth to a baby. (laughs) And this is like the biggest baby ever. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Um, that sounds painful. (laughs) <laughs> the unpainful it, version it, it, exactly <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, there's still some pain to it but it's all good it's all so enjoyable um, basically Havenwood Falls is a concept I had several years ago where I thought how fun it would be to uh, get together with a bunch of my writer friends and all of us write stories that take place in the same town Um At the time, I was really discouraged um, by a few industry experts saying that, you know, just the logistics are practically impossible because you have copyright issues and, you know, what happens if Hollywood calls or a big publisher, you know, wants only to do one book or something like that, then you have a lot of issues there. Well, so I just kind of let it sit in the back of my mind, but I could not let it go. I just, I just kept thinking how fun it would be. And more and more, I was watching authors wanting to collaborate on projects together, either co-writing or um, on projects like Kindle Worlds, where they're writing in other authors' worlds. And I just kept thinking there's got to be a way to do this. So I got with an intellectual property attorney mm-hmm. to hammer out a contract that would protect rights as much as possible, but leave the world open wide enough that authors could use each other's elements. 
So we finally got that figured out, and then it was just deciding, okay, do I want a small town in the mountains? Do I want a beach town? You know, and it just kept growing and growing in my mind. I kept putting things together and talking to a few authors, bouncing it off of them, and it finally became a reality, and I had um, 10 authors sign up almost right away. I'm adding new authors um, all the time. So what it is is Havenwood Falls is this small town in Colorado that's um, made up of both supernatural and humans. And we have multiple series. We're starting out with um, the main signature line, which is just the Havenwood Falls series. It's new adult and adult stories, Um, a lot of paranormal romance, but not necessarily Um, There will be mystery, there will be suspense, there will be um, other things besides romance. And then um, that launches with three books, August 4th, and then we'll have a a monthly release after that. So every month there will be a new book in that series. And then we have a young adult line launching in October with three books, and then after that there will be a monthly release. And next year I'm planning to add a historical line and possibly an erotical line. So they all take place in Haywood Falls, but the stories are going to be very different. And, you know, who they appeal to and what they're about will be very different. I love that you, um, there are so many things that you said in there. And of course, I didn't want to interrupt. So I wanted to give you a chance to get it all out. But I'm so excited about it because you mentioned that it was, um, it, it's, if you look at it, it's very similar to the Kindle world and how popular that has become with um, persons being able to um, kind of uh, write in an author's um, world, per se, and kind of build upon characters or what their thoughts are, fan fiction. But you're taking it outside of Kindle world and you've built your Christy world, I'm going to call it. <laughs> and <laughs> we're calling it Christie World, and it's in Havenwood. And I love that there's going to be pretty much every genre, so it's going to reach so many people. It won't just be okay. This is for YA, you know. If you like YA, then Havenwood Falls is perfect for you. No, it spans across even historical romances, which I'm glad that you said because I've yet to really dive into that genre yet. But now it's all going to kind of blend into Havenwood. So um, excited about that. So how did you come up with the name of the town? Is that something that always was in the in the back of your mind that you wanted to be Havenwood? Or did you come up with that once you decided that it was going to be um, based in the mountains in Colorado? Um, it was once I did. Well, I was I just had waterfalls in my head for a long time as I was thinking about it. Um, So I knew waterfalls were involved, and I kept going with falls, falls, falls. And, of course, there's so many that are already taken. And the historical side to the town is that a band of travelers, even starting over in um, the old countries, they all came to the New World, and supernatural families looking for a safe haven, um, Either, you know, something terrible happened in their old country, or you know, they were discovered, or, you know, there was tragedy that centered on their um, their difference. So they came to the new world, and they wanted to, they started meeting each other and joining each other and, you know, heading west with this idea of finding a place to start their own little town that was a safe haven for supernaturals. And along the way, they picked up even some humans um, and various other, you know, they just kept adding different types of creatures. And by the time they found this little box canyon in Colorado, they had already become a community. And this place was perfect because it is a box canyon. There's really only one way into town, um, an easy way in anyway. (laughs) <laughs> and so it provides protection on all sides, and it's something that's easily warded by the witch's magic, um, something where they can, you know, have more control over who comes in and who goes out and um, that kind of thing. So the word haven was always a part of that, and it was just, you know, coming up with something that hasn't been used yet, um, incorporating the falls, and that's how eventually I got to Havenwood Falls. 
And I do want to say that it's not just my world. The one way that it differs from Kindle Worlds is I gave a very basic foundation and all of the authors are growing it and evolving it. Right. So um, it's, you know, I had a few things in mind. I had the layout. I gave them a very crude map and that looked like I finger, well, I did finger paint it on my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> And they've just added businesses and characters and, you know, just developed it. And it's just, it's amazing how it's all coming together. And then when each time we add an author, there's just more that is growing. So it's going to be constantly evolving and growing just like in real life, which is really cool. It sounds really fun. Now, have you ever, have you been to Colorado? Colorado? Did you go there and and kind of do some research or um, was it? all online where you just discovered I wanted to be in Colorado and this is kind of the city that I'm mapping Havenwood Falls to be similar to? Um, I'm going to say a little bit of both because I actually lived in Denver when I was a kid. And um, when we lived in Kansas City and I had family in Arizona, we drove through Colorado quite a bit doing road trips back and forth. So um, I spent a lot of time in Colorado. I would love to spend more. Um, the mountains just are just so intriguing and beautiful and majestic, but also very intimidating. And there's just this, you can just feel when you're driving through them, you can just feel, you know, the um, mystique of the area. And so mm-hmm. it just feels like a really good place for a supernatural town. Um, it's Havenwood Falls is loosely modeled after Telluride, Colorado. So that's been where we do a lot of our research and just to get an idea of, you know, architecture and what materials they would use to build their buildings and, you know, the the layout around there and foliage and, you know, everything. We kind of model it after Telluride. Havenwood Falls is twice as big as Telluride, though, um, but less touristy. Because the supernaturals want to keep, the, they're, they're very um, tight with how they manage the tourists. They do have some tourism, but um, they got to keep careful control in case, you know, a werewolf goes streaking across town square or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did not want to be um, uh, one of the tourists during that time because, yeah, <laughs> no, I think I'd probably freak out a little bit. And yeah, so no. I totally get that. So your book is releasing on August 4th. And um, if you want to tell us a little bit about that. um, And then there's two other books that are releasing that date. So let's start with yours. um, And then then maybe you'll give us a little inside scoop on the other authors who are participating in releases this year. Sure. Okay. My book is called Forget You Not. And I, we do recommend that you read it first because it helps um, bring you into the town and some of the world building and get, you know, get you a little familiar with some of the magic rules. Um, it's not an end all, though, um, because, like I said, everything's constantly growing and evolving. But it is a really great introduction into Havenwood Falls. And in it, you meet Kayla Peters, who is a vampire turned a couple of years ago living in Atlanta and it's not a good place for her and she receives this mysterious job offer in a small mountain town in Colorado and so she goes and it turns out that her life is not at all what she thought it was um and learns basically that she's from Havenwood Falls and so the story just unfolds from there um you meet a few other creatures. You meet some of the um, the representatives of the people who are really in charge. Um, so we have a we have a normal city council, but then behind that is the quarter of the sun and the moon, which are the supernaturals, and then they work with the Luna Coven, which is the witches' coven that kind of makes sure all the magic. Um, works to keep everything in control. <laughs> isn't, it, so. isn't it always fun when someone asks you to give a back a little bit about the book or series and you try to make sure your words don't give too much away? That seems like, yes. the, that seems like <laughs> the 
<laughs> the hardest part of a chat is because we want to know and you want to give us as much as you can without giving us as much as you can. And so I got to experience that right then when you were saying really <laughs> creeping with what you yes. wanted to tell me <laughs> because we don't want to spoil it for anybody, right? We want them to want to follow all of these stories and yeah. So later on, you can tell me the inside skinny, but we won't, we won't tell everybody else though. <laughs> It's um, it's always a lot of fun, you know. To, you don't want to give things away, but um, on the other hand, you got to say a little bit about the story just to make sure you know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's like writing a blurb, so you know, yes. or, or the summary. You're like, I just need to give them enough information so that they want to read the book, but not too yeah. much where I tell them somebody dies at the end. You know, <laughs> that doesn't right, happen. Right. That doesn't happen, everybody. I'm just, you know, giving an example. Um, but OK, so your book, like I, if Forget You Not, is releasing on August 4th. And then you have um, there are two other authors who are releasing books as well. What, who are they and what are the names of their books? OK, E.J. Facenda is releasing Fate, Love and Loyalty. And it's a story about mountain lions, shifters. And Susan Burdorf is releasing Old Wounds. And it's a story about a human and a wolf shifter. Oh, nice. And are, are all three of you, all three of your books new adult? Yes. Okay. So that's a good way to start, everybody. We're starting with new adult um, and some good paranormals there. And Christy's book is setting the background and the history so you want to make sure that you read hers first now once um we read yours first is there really any order after that should we go um, based on release date of the books or can the other ones kind of be read um in any order everything is written as a standalone unless an author decides to write their a sequel to their own story but okay. that you know, we we do have that. In fact, I'll be writing a sequel to Forget You Not. We do have that happening, but that would be just be by author. Um, otherwise, you can read out of order. You don't even have to read Forget You Not first. It's just recommended. Mm -hmm. um, if you read them in order of release, then you're kind of getting them in chronological order because that is how um, everyone's timing their book. Mm -hmm. um, their story, you know, it takes place about the same time that their book comes out for the most part. So you would get um, some of that chronology there, but you don't have to. Um, it's not like anybody's book's plot relies on anybody else's. Yeah. So I always wonder about um, co-authoring and um, and things as this of this nature where you are writing sort of simultaneously and different things are happening. Now, because you guys are so busy writing, um, do you have sort of meetings to kind of talk about, well, this is what's going on in my story. Do you take any notes or do you actually like have time to, I, I doubt you would have time to read other people's books, but how do you kind of keep up with what's going on um, in the background of the other stories? Um, we have a private Facebook group, but we also have a forum, and that is where our World Bible is kept, okay. and it's World a Bible. message. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's um, <laughs> it quickly grew out of hand. Originally, it was a single web page um, that I was just adding to, and then it just grew and grew and grew, and so now we have a forum. Um, it's like a message board where we have, we keep track of everything. And, you know, we have places for our characters. So our main characters stay with the author, but any other characters are up for grabs. So, you know, if you're, if a main character goes to the coffee shop and they talk to someone who's working there, or someone who might be drinking coffee there, that appears in someone else's book. Um, so that's where you get a lot of the crossover and where all the fun comes in. Um, so we have our forum that just kind of keeps all of that organized, all of the businesses so we can keep our descriptions straight. And um, we even have a calendar to track weather events so that, you know, in one person's story, if it snows, it's not 
80 degrees and another person's <laughs> story on the same day. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. We just chalk it up to say, you know, there's some creepy things happening in Havenwood Falls. Well, on that's one true. Side of the, on one side of the town, it's 90 degrees. And when you turn the corner, it's snowing. What's going exactly. on? Exactly. <laughs> it could happen. We do always have that loophole of magic to rely on. So. Exactly. And then, and then somebody has to come back in and correct the weather because somebody did some wacky spell that screwed everything up. Yeah. And so that would be kind of interesting. I'm just throwing that out there. If I see it in a book, you know, I'll just say, oh, remember Christy and I talked about that on the phone? It's snowing and it's hot on in the same day. So it can happen. <laughs> it could definitely happen. Now, I want to know a little bit about um, some of the other authors who have already joined the other seven that we don't know about. So if you kind of want to run through that and everybody, just so you know, there is a Havenwood Falls website, correct, um, Christy? Yes. And and all of that information is will be on there. But I figure I'd love for them, them to have a little shout out as well. So Christy, introduce us to the other authors in this project. Okay, and there are more than seven now. We, we started okay. out with yeah, like 10, 20. Yeah, there's um, <laughs> quite a few more. So um, there's me, Susan Burdorf, and EJ Facenda, who are all releasing August 4th. Our next release is by Randy Cooley Wilson, and that'll be in September. And then I am co writing a book um, with a debut author, TV Han, that will release in October. Lila Felix has a release in November. R.K. Riles has a release in December. Um, Heather Hildebrand, Belinda Boring, and Stacey Wark are scheduled for our adult line next year, new adult adult line next year. Yay. And then on the YA side, we have Callie Ross, Morgan Wiley, and Kristen Yard releasing in October. Amy Hale releasing in November, and Michelle G. Miller releasing in December. And I have a couple of contracts on their way for um, into 2018. And then, I'm, like I said, I'm constantly adding. And the authors are having so much fun that they're submitting proposals for um, writing more than one story. So I think we'll be pretty booked up for 2018 for both of those. And then, like I said, I'm, I want to add um, more authors for the other two lines, historical and erotica. So it's, it's kind of crazy, but it's a lot of fun. It sounds like it, and you've already um, already extended into 2018, and then the next time we chat, you'll be in 2020, and we'll, I mean. I hope we chat before then. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we'll be chatting before then, but then you'll be giving me the schedule saying, oh, in 2020, this book is releasing, and this movie and TV show is coming out. See how I did that? Kind of just put yes. that out there. Because in all actuality, even though, um, you know what this reminds me of? And sort of, kind of, it reminds me of, it's going to be weird, Desperate Housewives. And I don't know why, but it's like each one of them had their own little story thing going on, but they all kind of intermingle together. And then you have like this voiceover person who <laughs> we're trying to figure out what happened to her. And I don't know why Havenwood Falls reminds me of like, Something that I would watch on TV that's like, like you know, Desperate Housewives. It's kind of like well, that. It is a community, and it does have an ensemble cast, really. If you were, if they were to make it a TV series, that's how it would be, is you have all these different storylines going at the same time, and they kind of overlap, but then they're also separate. So I can see where you're getting it from. Yeah, thank you, because in my, every time I, I think about it, I'm like, oh, Desperate Housewives, or something something to that extent. So that's why I'm really excited about it because I like that it crosses genres and it's not just, you know, they're all the same. And then you have this really um, growing group of versatile authors. Um, and so it's good for people who may not have read uh, maybe a Morgan Wiley book, but is really all on board with Havenwood Falls and it's introducing um, new readers to new authors that they may not have, you know, uh, at any other point picked up their book for some reason. So yes. I like that. I like that um, it's going to be ongoing. And not only that, you also have another baby, another project that you um, 
started with this year too, which is afterwards. And yes. I really love the concept about that. So let our listeners know uh, more about what afterwards is. Okay. Afterwards is a joint project between my publishing company and Dora Productions and Redcoat PR. And we are developing together a series of seminars to help authors new and experienced learn a lot more about the business side of being an author. And this applies to both indie and traditional and hybrid and, you know, whether you published your first book or you're publishing your 20th, you're going to learn something. Um, a lot of writers don't fully understand what they're getting into when they start a publishing career. Mm -hmm. um, they a lot, you know, don't have a lot of business experience, don't know what it means to own your own business, which is essentially what you're doing. So we are creating and delivering these seminars. Um, they'll be traveling from city to city. Our first one is in St. Louis. And I want to make sure I get the date right on here. Because I'm in St. Louis so many times. I believe um, Is it October? Yes, October 18th and 19th will be in St. Louis. We'll have three modules um, for that one. There's one on the business side of self-publishing, um, one, an all day one on marketing, and now I'm blanking out on the other one. That's okay. Um, <laughs> but they can find information about that too on, do you have a website for that, Christy? Um, right now, we're still working on getting the actual website going right now. Um, if, we have a page on Facebook if you go to, if you look up afterwards on Facebook, um, and it's afterwards spelled like W O R D S. Um, and I believe that has links to the event right page. Exactly. Where you yeah, your your schedule is up there on Facebook, and I I like that you have come up. One, I love the title. It's very catchy. The business name afterwards, because you know it's. I think you listed somewhere like what comes after you write the end, or something yes. like that. And um, I've had a chance to speak with a lot of authors, um, newer indie published authors, and they all say, I wish I just didn't have to do the business part. And um, so many people don't take that into consideration. Like you said, all of the business aspects, they just want to write. Um, so do you? what are some things that you can tell before a person signs up for one of the workshops? What are some things that you can tell newer authors to keep in mind when they're um, writing, um, how they can make sure that their finances are up to date, um, and some little tips that would be beneficial to them as they uh, go into this writing venture as a business and not just a hobby? Um, that's the key right there is too many think, oh, you know, I don't plan on making money on this and it's going to throw up my first book and see what happens. And big mistake. If you are putting a book up for money, you are in business. That is a business transaction. And if you don't set yourself up right from the beginning, you're going to have a huge headache later. What happens if it does take off and you're making gobs of money and you don't have the bank account set up and you have Uncle Sam chasing after you? And then you have some crackpot and they are out there who <laughs> claims that they wrote that and you're infringing yeah. on their copyright and so they sue you and you have no protection of your home your personal assets if you don't have your business set up correctly and your finances separated you can get into just so much trouble mm -hmm. um, with the IRS with legal issues I mean you're just setting yourself up for major problems if you do it right from the beginning um, most states, you know, it might be $100, maybe $200 to set up a company. Um, you might need to pay uh, an accountant to figure out what kind to start with. But that's your very first step that you should make. As soon as you're thinking, I want to put this out there for money and not just for free. If you if if you don't care about making money, then put it up on Wattpad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> if you just want to see if there's an audience, then do it that way before you start getting involved in all of the business side of it because 
if it, you know, like I said, if it does take off or even if it doesn't, but you're like, okay, it's doing well enough. I'm going to write a second book or you're just so into it. You're enjoying it. You want to write a second book and put it out there. And that's the thing is the more books you write, then the more successful they're all going to be. So just putting one out there isn't a smart idea anyway, because it's not going to do very well completely on its own. You're, it, there's just there's millions of books you're competing against for visibility. But once you start gaining your backlist, then you're going to start seeing the money come in. And at that point, you are so busy. Right. Um, most of the time, you might still have a, another job um, or, you know, mom and uh, or dad and um, making household, you know, run smoothly and everything in addition to everything else. And then you're writing and you have a business. And by then you're so busy that instead of taking, you know, one day early on to set up everything right, you're now trying to squeeze it in 15 minutes at a time and it just doesn't get done correctly. And, and then you can run into issues with the retailers as well if you're not set up correctly. Um, so that's my biggest um, thing that I try to tell authors, do not make the mistake of doing this as a hobby um, or saying, you know, I don't expect to make any money off of it and I'm just going to put it out there and see what happens and I'm not going to worry about doing all this other stuff because it could be for nothing. Well, it's not for nothing <laughs> when, uh, when Uncle Sam is coming after you or, you know, some crazy person wants to sue you or, or you know, or even just you're doing well enough that now you just don't have the time to do all of those things. Right. And we definitely don't want Uncle Sam chasing after anybody. I mean, there, you just don't want that. That's not fun at all. And then you, you really don't, you want to protect your, um, your work. And, um, and now we've seen another increase in piracy. Yes. Um, just taking place. And not only that, but with audio books as well. So it's just, uh -huh. um, in, in any way somebody can hack or steal it's it's been happening so uh -huh. um uh, christy makes really good points to it's not really a hobby anytime you're putting your name on something and putting it out there um it, it's it's a business and now do you think if someone if someone decided decides not to go i know we're going to kind of into the business aspects aspect but some people need this information um uh -huh. If they decided not to go with, you know, um, creating an LLC or corporation, can they still have the same rights and protection if they do a DBA? You know, it's a little bit cheaper, maybe 20 or $10 versus the LLC cost, especially if you go through LegalZoom or something like that. Is that another alternative to be able to protect them until they can move toward the corporation? Um, it's... It is an option. I personally don't recommend it, but I am not an attorney. I am not an accountant. Um, everyone's situation is different. The biggest problem you're going to run into there is if you, when you, I'm going to say if, but when you later just realize that you need to start a company, um, most likely an LLC is what you need. Mm -hmm. um, but when that time comes and you, if you have to change how you are taxed, um, instead of as an individual and just filing uh, a Schedule C, which is your business return, that's part of your individual re return. Um, if you form an LLC and you're taxed as a company now, then you get a whole new tax number. And then what happens there is iBooks and some of the other retailers requires you to create a whole new account and move all of your books over. And at that time, you lose all of your reviews. Mm. Um yeah. Now, Amazon, <laughs> Amazon's suck. easier to work with because you won't lose your reviews. But, you know, there's still a lot of things you got to hoops you got to jump through. Mm -hmm. And then if you do have, you know, for whatever reason you get sued, if you're just a DBA, you have no legal protection mm -hmm. of your personal assets. So basically what a DBA is saying is that you are a person doing business. Right. Whereas an LLC or a C Corp is a separate entity mm -hmm. and they are, you know, your finance, everything is separated from you as a person, as long as you do everything correctly. And so, you know, a judge will be looking at the company and not at, at you personally as, um, and you know, what assets you have, your house, um, any savings, retirement, any of that is just 
that's completely off the table, you know, if you're comp- if you have issues with your company. Um, makes a lot then, of sense. Yeah. And so I know it is more expensive to do an LLC or a corporation than it is a DBA, but it's really in your best interest in the long run because you're going to end up spending that money tenfold trying to straighten everything out. And then, you know, like I said, if you end up having to, you know, change things with the retailers and you're losing reviews, then you're going to be losing sales and visibility and more yeah. sales. And it's so. it's more so, like you said, to just go ahead and do everything in the beginning um, instead of trying to do it later because then it protects you. And plus you have already um, established your foundation um, and covered yourself. So everybody makes yes. sense before you publish hit publish or send everything make sure that you have your business together we can't at say the, it enough exactly at the very least talk to an accountant um every state is different um in florida it's not expensive at all to um, start an llc and the protection is definitely worth it but other states are different so um definitely talk to an accountant who is familiar with publishing and familiar with your state taxes and state Mm -hmm. corporate laws and everything and find out what they say because they might have other advice, but um, I think basically that um, they will not recommend that you start out with a DBA. Okay, makes sense. So we've covered the business aspect. We've had a chance to talk about Havenwood Falls a little bit, and you made a nice sweat segue into Florida. So, Christy, <laughs> you just recently relocated not too long ago to the sun, the Sunshine State. So, how's it? How's everything going out there in Florida? Um, actually, I've lived in Florida for over ten years. Did but you? I, just, I thought you just moved from somewhere else. Did I make that I, up in my head? <laughs> no, I did just move to Orlando. I uh, was on the on the West Coast. So, okay. Uh, See, I, I didn't moved. make it up. You just switched. No, cities. you didn't. I did. <laughs> I did. I, I came. Well, there's two places I never wanted to live in Florida. That's Orlando and Miami, and I'm <laughs> in Orlando now. <laughs> so. Never say never, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I recently moved to Orlando. Um, a whole bunch of life changes in the last couple of years have led me here. My all three of my sons um, went to University of Central Florida, and um, two have graduated. Two are still in the area, and so I moved to be closer to them because once they left the house, I was pretty much left in um, where I was mm-hmm. in a four-bedroom house completely by myself. So oh. there was no point in that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I sold it, and I've moved to Orlando now, and... Unfortunately, I've been here a month, and I've been to Walmart and the grocery store Are and my serious? son's house, that's and that's it? about it. <laughs> Come on, you're first of all, you're in Florida, uh, in Orlando, no doubt. Well, of course, that's the city you said you didn't want to be in, and but you're there, and you've been to Walmart and probably Publix, right? And Publix, <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, that's just awful. <laughs> so, so. Are you not a big okay? So most people that live in Orlando um, are are not big Disney goers or do the Universal thing because it's just right there. Me, I don't live there, so every time I go, I'm all Team Disney. So now that you live closer, you're in Orlando. Do you do you have any uh, any oomph to even want to go to Disney or Orlando? Are you even into any of either one of those entertainment places? Um, I actually love Universal Studios because of Harry Potter. Oh, uh, you would. I wish there and, was a and, boo sound effect on here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you booing Harry Potter? We cannot be friends. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. I've never <laughs> seen Harry Potter. Or oh, read my the book. God. I know. Shut up. I'm so Who are you? Who am I, talking? <laughs> <laughs> I love Harry Potter, and I actually even liked Universal Studios before we went to Harry or before they made uh, Harry Potter World. Um, but my kids, you know, I had three boys, and they were teenagers, mm-hmm. so Universal was a lot more appealing to them uh, than Disney at mm-hmm. that time. So that just kind of became a place we would come to um, when we wanted to do the theme park. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been to Disney a couple of times and it's lovely. 
Um, it's just, I'm not a huge fanatic, um, Disney fanatic, like a lot of my friends. Oh my one gosh. Named Doc is. I can't. You're hurting my heart. You just, oh, you're killing me softly. Ugh. Um, I think that's a result because I used to be so into it, but I think it's a result of raising three boys. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, we'll give you that. I'll let you slide on that one because you did say you say you've been a couple of times. Now, if you had told me that you've never been, um, <laughs> wait, wait, let me take that back. Have you been in the last five years? Yeah, I was just there in March. Okay, all right, we, we're cool then. We're ace <laughs> because I went to Universal. Um, I went last year. I did get to see Harry Potter World. Um, so I, I at least have that. I had butter beer, so you know I'm not too far gone. I know what a Hufflepuff is. I think. Awesome. Um, but that's that's like the extent of my knowledge of Harry Potter. At some point, I think I may watch the movie. I don't know if I'll get around to reading the book, but I may watch the movies. So. So we can still be friends, right? Okay, yes. Okay. I'll forgive you. I'll, if you can forgive me for not loving Disney, then I'll forgive you for not reading Well, that's Harry still in the air. That's still up in the air, though, because, you know, it's Disney. It's the happiest place on earth. Like, really, for real. My son's girlfriend works there, and she just absolutely loves it. Yeah. Um, so we we get lots of Disney um Stop. insight here <laughs> see i like her i must i must come visit and be friends with her so i can get disney insight um but uh, okay so uh last couple things you do have a fur baby yes i do and and you have a, a dog what kind of dog he is a puggle he's half pug and half beagle oh is he like your um well i take dallas everywhere you know that so i know did you go camping was it this year or last year you went camping? You took? Did you take the dog with you? This year I went on, after I sold my house um, and hadn't decided where I was going to live next, um, I was seriously considering living on the road in an RV. And so I did a little trip with Buster, my dog. The two of Buster. us went up. <laughs> yep, the two of us went up to the Carolinas and we visited some friends and we did some camping. He hated it. it. <laughs> he hated it. Okay. He was like, this is not for me, mom. This this isn't nope. working. <laughs> Can you put us in a house, please? Thank you. <laughs> With the bed and couches. Exactly. You know, God oh. forbid he sleeps on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I've seen pictures. He's so cute. I had a dog named Buster, too, before Dallas. He was a Cocker Spaniel. And so uh, that, that brings back memories. That's such a good name for a dog. And um, they're kind of like everything. They're like our best friends. And um, they they give us comfort. So at least he was with you. But he probably would have tried to curse you out if you had kept him out there on the road that a little bit longer. Like, no. Yeah. He, <laughs> as long as he was with me, he was okay. But he did not like the camping part. Yeah. Um, he didn't like being out. It was kind of cold. He's got Florida blood now. So <laughs> um, it, to him, it was kind of cold. And But he didn't want to be inside the tent by himself. He didn't want to be outside the tent at all. So it was either I lay down in the tent with him where he wasn't happy. And I was not going to spend my entire time laying in the tent. So, yeah, poor Buster. He just did not like it. Yeah, but he's happy now, right? Yeah, he is. Okay, good. Used to apartment life and you know taking our daily walks and everything, and he likes that uh, the boys are close and they come and see him. So oh, he's, that's ex good. he's excited about that. That's good. Everybody's all happy now and everything, and you've got this big project, this big baby. You said it's like birthing yes. a baby that's like a hundred pounds, and <laughs> you, you're in labor for like two, three, four, five years with it yeah. and um gosh man ouch but it's a good it's a good birth thing so we're excited about that and um can't wait to read forget you not uh again releasing on august 4th everyone christy please tell all of our listeners how they can find more information about havenwood falls and also how they can follow you on social media okay um more information on havenwood falls 
first of all, go to the website, www.havenwoodfalls.com. We also have a Facebook reader group called Havenwood Falls Book Club that we invite everyone to join. And we have the Havenwood Falls Facebook page that you can like as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as for myself, I have my website, christycook.com, and Christy is K-R-I-S-T-I-E. Um, and then you can also find me on Facebook um, by that name. I have an author page as well as my regular profile. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram as Christy Cook, A-U-T-H. Um, that's all they would allow me. <laughs> their life, yeah, it's so. a little lengthy there. They, <laughs> they, they do limit how many characters you can have. <laughs> uh, it's Christy Cook off. <laughs> <laughs> You just was too, it was just two letters too many. I mean, you couldn't even get the O-R. That's so sad. (laughs) They could have let you squeeze that in. Darn. (laughs) I would think so, but whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Well, well, everybody, you can find Christy Cook everywhere. And it's Christy with a K, like she said, so don't go looking for her with a C or C-R. You know, there are so many variations. She's Christy with a K. We like it like that. And there's an E at the end because there is another author, Christy Cook, without the E at the end. And yeah, yeah. We, love, we love talking to each other's fans, but um, different <laughs> kinds of books. So she Very writes different. YA. Yes. Yeah. It's so funny. I have a friend named Heather Renee, and she just released her first book a couple months ago. And I found somebody on Facebook that has author Heather Renee spelled exactly the same and I friended her and everything and I was like you didn't tell me you had another Facebook page and she was like this is my only page and it's, they have oh the same God. exact name they're both authors spelled exactly the same way and so yeah now I'm friends with both of them oh my gosh how interesting but I, yeah I don't, I don't think there's another Jacqueline Protho or Jacqueline, as my mom calls me, Protho out there. So I, I think I'm it, everybody. I think you're I, safe. Yeah, I think I'm I think safe. You are safe zone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christy, thank you so much for chatting with me today. It's been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And I am looking forward to seeing you. Will I see you at any events this year? I will be at Once Upon a Book in Michigan, August 11th and 12th. And I will be at PenCon in St. Louis uh, September 29th and 30th. So I will see you at both then. Awesome. I'm so hey, excited about wait. that. Yay. And also, I wanted to do one last shout out because um, I, if you haven't seen the cover reveals for the first three books, they're absolutely amazing. And Christy is working with the very talented Regina Wamba. And she's doing all of the design work for everything Havenwood Falls. And so just wanted to give her a quick shout out um, for all the work she's doing with the book covers and the logo and everything. Um, So be sure that you go by and also give all the authors who are participating in Havenwood Falls this far. Give their page a like and also go by and give Regina's page a like. And be sure you like Booking Around Town on Facebook as well as Twitter, um, Booking, B-O-O-K-I-N, around T-W-N, because I couldn't get all my letters to fit either, Christy, <laughs> on Facebook, on Twitter, and also we're on Instagram at Booking Around Town. But that's awesome. all we have for you today. Christy, you want to tell everybody Bye. I do. Bye. And thank you so very much for having me and letting me ramble on about this big, huge baby. Um, We're very excited and we hope readers love it as much as uh, we the authors do. And yes, big shout out to Regina, who's just been a saint through all of this. Oh, and one other thing. Watch out for Michelle Hamlin. She will be coming to your screen very soon. Yay. Well, we're excited about meeting everybody and all of the characters in Havenwood Falls. But until next time, keep booking. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.